So hello and welcome to a small tutorial. Um, well this can be a tutorial series showing you how to make a scrolling shooter game. So let's begin. Now first thing we're going to do is get the player motion done. So first we want to move it up, down, left and right. If you press up, down, left or right. So we're going to check if you press the up arrow. If you press the down arrow. And if you press the left or right arrow. And if you do any of these, then we want to move the player. So now we want to go into motion and add in a change x by 10 and a change y by 10. So to move up, we change the y by 10. To move down, we change the y by negative 10. To move right, we change the x by 10. To move left, we change the x by negative 10. Then let's quickly put this in a forever. And see how it works. So, we should have the cat now able to move in all directions. This is good, but the screen's rather small and the cat's quite limited. So, let's add scrolling. First, before we add scrolling, I'm going to paint a new sprite and name this level. So, for now, I'm just going to draw a square. And that should be our level. Also, the cat is rather large, so I'm going to half his size. And also, the cat walks up through the level. So, to get scrolling done, we need to delete the my variable and make a variable called scroll x. This is for the scrolling x, camera x, whatever you want to call it. And make it for all sprites. I'm going to put in capitals. And now let's create another variable called scroll y for the scrolling x and y. So we start with these both set to zero because we want to start, this is essentially where we're looking at the game from. We want to start them at zero. And then we create some variables for this sprite only called x and y. These are going to be its position not on the screen, its x and y position that's built into motion. Instead, these are going to be its position on the big world which goes bigger than the screen. So now let's replace all these with change x by and change y by. By that I mean our variables. So let's quickly make this like, I don't know, negative 5, 5, negative 5 and 5 so that they move. And change these to y. So now you can see when we try and move, our sprite does not actually move, but our variables change. But they change a bit fast. So the first thing I'm going to do is start by setting your x and y to zero. So you start in the center. And then I want to move your sprite to your x and y. Minus the scrolling x and y. Which means we can move where we're looking at the level from. So if I do x minus scroll x and y minus scroll y, now you should be able to move in exactly the same way we were doing earlier. But the thing is here, so we're moving in exactly the same way we were earlier. But if we show scroll x and make it a slider, we can now move where we're looking at it from. So looking at it from more to the left or we're looking at it from more to the right. But of course, our level has to move with this as well. So let's drag this into our level. And now we're going to make a broadcast for all of them to update to the scrolling position. So we're going to make a message and we're going to call it scroll. No, let's call it position. Is this... No, let's call it scroll. Oh, I can't decide. So this is going to be when they position themselves in their scroll's position, essentially. So now in our player, uh, before after the player moves, then it wants to move the level. So if I move the scroll x, it changes where we're looking at the whole level from now, which is good. But now, of course, the player walks through the level. So let's quickly try and fix that. So let's make a block called move. And let's add an input for x and y. And make sure this runs without screen refresh. Just in case. So, for this move block, we now want to check um, 
We now want to move it by that x and that y. So what we want to do is change our variable x by x. And then we want to, actually let's make a block called position. Run that screen bash. This will position it at its scrolling x. So now we position it on the screen. And then we check if its x that it's moved to is, no, we need to now check if it's touching the level. So if it has walked into the level, we don't want to do this move. So let me just repeat. We move our x by what we want. Then we position it on the screen so that we can see if it's in the level on the screen. If it is in the level, then we move it back to where it was before it moved. So then if it is in the level, we change x by zero takeoff x. That'll basically mean if x was five, we move back negative five. And then let's duplicate this and do the same for the y. And it is important that we do them separately. I'll show you why later. We can't right click those and change those. So let's quickly change all this to y now. Now at the end, we want to do one last position. So now rather than doing all this, we can drag all these out and replace them with move. And our move block should stop it going inside the level. So if we make up, move y by 5, down, move y by negative 5, right, move x by 5, and left, move x by negative 5. And now if we have a go, we can see you cannot walk through the level, and you can neatly slide around it. This is because we're doing the X and Y separately, and a lot of games don't let you slide around the level. You just stop if you hit the wall while we can slide left and right while holding down. So that's all working well, and we can change the scroll X and scroll Y while we're moving, kind of. So this is all working well. Now the next thing we want to do is make the camera move to where the player is positioned. So we want to change the scrolling X. Now and the scrolling y by the difference between its x. So basically what we're doing, we're moving it to the player. So we change the scroll x by it, the difference between it and the player's x. Basically we move it by how far it's got to move, but we divide it, so we move it by a fifth of how much it's meant to move, which means it'll just go there smoothly and eventually so now yeah okay that's the wrong way around so we do y take off scroll y divided by five and x take off scroll x divided by five and now if we have a look at this we should be able to move around and it'll all scroll nicely and you won't walk through the blocks so that's all working well now we want a few more broadcasts so the next thing we're going to do is paint a new sprite. We're going to name this sprite enemy. And now let's just draw a square for the enemy. So this enemy, we want it to move towards the player. So let's drag in the code for when it receives scroll to scroll. And it should receive scroll at the end after it's moved the camera. So now the enemy will do this when it receives scroll. So my enemy would just move with all the rest of the level, nice and neatly, but what if we wanted it to move? Well, I will have to create a new broadcast, a new message, and I'm going to call this message enemy update, or enemy move. So this is when all the enemies will move. And now under here, I want the enemy to, for now, point towards mouse pointer, move 10 steps. But we can't just drag these in. Because say we got the player after it broadcasts um, scroll to um, broadcast enemy update. Then let's have a look at this. Our enemy will not scroll as it tries to move 10 steps, but then it moves to its scrolling position. So instead, what we've got to do 
is we first got to change this to player or sprite one. And rather than moving ten steps, we want to move it in a direct code the same thing but changing x and y. So how we do this is we change y by the sign of the direction multiplied by the speed we do it. And we no, never mind. So we change x by the sine of the direction multiplied by 5. We change y by the cosine of the direction multiplied by 5. This will just get it to change. It's basically doing the same as move 5 steps. But instead of moving those steps with its on screen position. It's changing its x and y variables. Now if we drag in direction here. We should see that we have an enemy. And it moves very quickly towards a player. Let's make this two. Let's make this two. And now we have an enemy that moves slowly towards my player. So that's all good. But the enemy is walking through the level. So the next thing we want to do is stop the enemy walking through the level. To do this, we will kind of have to copy our move block from the player. And then drag it into the enemy. So, rather than changing the X and Y individually, we're now going to just call this move block from the player and put in what we want to move our X by and what we want to call move our Y by. And now when we start, our enemy should not move through the level. So now you can see the enemy would not move through the level, but it would not slide along it either, which is a bit problematic. You can see here it just gets stuck. So that's working fairly well, I guess. Anyway, that will be the end of part one. I hope you enjoyed it. It was just a quick tutorial. I might go over it more in depth next time. But that'll be it for now. Bye!